All right, so we back again, man. Now I mean, our last interview. Now I mean, a lot of people. Now I mean, gave some good feedback. Now I mean, so tell the people. Now I mean, how how it was on yet, and now I mean, as far as the response, what your thoughts was on the last interview we did and all that. Like I said, you get, get real responses. Just keep it real. You know what I mean, every every question, every question is like you told me, every question that you was asking me, I wasn't beating around the bush. I was giving that shit to you straight up. So this what happened. This what happened right here. Any question you asked me, I was telling you to ask me certain shit that I felt like niggas was like, you know what I mean? So like, you keep it real, niggas respect it more. Like when I be reading the comments, my nigga be saying, I look at him different after hearing him talk. You know what I mean? He make a lot of sense, like, you know what I mean? So, I like it because it, it, it gives niggas another perspective of me. You know what I mean, when I ain't rapping all the time and I ain't on the camera all the, all the time, you know what I mean? I'm a chill family nigga too. You know, everybody do their street shit, but like, I'm a chill family nigga too. So, you know what I mean? That's how I, you know what I mean? All right. So, we was talking, you know what I mean, off camera earlier today, and you know I mean, we were talking about, you know what I mean, the interviews that I had did with um, Young Bob and Touch Money Nah. And you was basically, you know what I mean, we was talking a little bit about that whole situation with the headshots versus touch money top class. So we want to get the people a little bit what we was talking about off camera. But let's, let me first talk about, you know what I mean, touch base on this. You know what I mean, take them back a little bit it's before we get to the actual um, battle. So you and me, actually, you know what I mean, y'all from the same hood. So y'all basically came up together, started rapping together first. So tell people a little bit about that, you know what I mean? It was like, like I said... Me and me went to the same schools. I'm from 25th and Burks, Johnson Home. We from a block away. Young Bob is from the other block away. So we always been my friends. You feel me? So like, like me and me, like we had a different relationship than Bob. And Bob was a little older than that's kind of that's kind of like our old head. But like, I used to go to meet Craig, write raps, everything like. We had this old head named Bobby Locke. He had a studio in his basement. We, me and Meek found him. We started recording in his basement. We just making a bunch of songs together and shit. They had started this Lights Out Click shit. Me, Pep Shooter, and him. And we just was, we was running with that shit for a little minute. And like that was, that was, that was my guy. I go to his crib and he come through. He holler at me every time. He ran away, he holler at me. Every time he anywhere, he asked you where he checked. You know what I mean? So it was like, like, we was on that level, like, you know what I mean? So, like, we was, yeah, we was like that. That's my nigga. That's my nigga. So, at some point, he, he had, you know what I mean? Moved, moved on and started, I mean, being down South Philly a little bit more, and he ended up, I mean, doing the situation with the Bloodhounds, and then you ended up, I mean, linking up with Touch Money and Top Class. So speak a little bit about how that situation came together. They was always mad at me for that shit. <laughs> Them niggas was always mad at me for that shit. But like, even back then, I was a businessman. Like, Reed, Frankie. Rain, Eddie Mars, me, boom. We was on that big star battle tour. Big, like, 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 nigga said, big star was the the, the the biggest DVD out. If you got on big star, you was a star in the hood, guaranteed. Or in the tri-state, whatever you want to call it, damn in the world. You know what I mean? So once we got on that, that shit opened a whole nother. Never, never lane, cause it was like, now we on this tour together, he battling niggas, we battling niggas, we around each other more, we doing shit more, you know what I mean? So, OG was already fucking with Boom and them, and before I came up. I met Boom and them through a, a producer. I went up their way one day, I was up there with them for a couple of years, he like, my man Nah around here, I'm like 14, 15 at this time. He like my man Nah around here, he started his music shit, bro. He gonna fuck with you, hot shit. Take me around the music house, huh? Smith and Nah. Nah, like, he, he in. We want him, he in. You know what I mean? He hot as shit, you know what I mean? So, I started just running with them. It was a bigger, I was thinking business minded back then. You got all these niggas on way bigger platforms than the niggas that's on platforms and headshots. So why not surround myself around these niggas so I can become a bigger star? 
You know what I mean? Why I go around down here with niggas that everybody got built up with? Everybody already over here already gonna build up their name. You know what I mean? That, that's gonna make me a bigger star. Like, so that was the reason I did it. I did it out of business prospect. Like, thinking as a young and as a big, uh, and on a business prospect. Like, I'm gonna go over here because this, this, this was a bigger, this was a bigger fan base at at the time. This is where everything at that that makes you better at the time. So I'm gonna go over here with my. That's what I did. I went over there. Where, so we was talking off camera about um, how you, I mean, the, we did the interview with Young Bob and, and Nah, and they was talking about how, I mean, the headshots, touch money battle had came together from that aspect, and they had mentioned that, I mean, it really stemmed from you and still battle, how y'all had battle and you ended up winning, you won the trophy, and... I mean, it was some tension because of that, and then that ended up leading to the, the headshots versus touch money sure, top class battle. Like I told, I told you, like I felt like it was always a little tension. I'm from North Philadelphia. That's headshot. I'm out here with these niggas. Bob I knew I was hot too. Why the fuck is you not down here with us? You know what I mean? So I always knew it was a little tension. Like you niggas was always mad at me. They say little shit to me and shit like that. You know what I mean? So it was like, it was always a little tension, but the battle just made it worse. Than me. That shit made it worse, because it was like, man, this nigga out there with, with them, he gonna come down here and take the headshots trophy. And he ain't not, I mean, he ain't even fuck with us. He gonna come down here and take the headshots trophy. So now they felt some type of way about that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, no, no, like. So now that really got the tensions high. Like, he ain't gonna come down here and, to get the headshot trophy and get a bankroll. I look for the bankroll and the headshot trophy. So that had niggas heated. But I beat him, so you know he's the most heated. Like, oh, I let this nigga beat me. So that's when they start popping up to the store and shit. Doing this little wild shit he was doing, you know what I mean? So that's, that's where the tension came from. I, I beat him. That's, that's where it came from, I beat him. So tell people how, how the whole thing started kicking off from your perspective because y'all started going hard at each other. Now I mean and it was crazy because you had ended up starting with Meek and Bob was like your oil, you said and now you ended up beefing with them, you know what I mean, battling, going at each other. So tell people how that was for you. I don't care what Meek say, Meek diss me first. Meek diss me first. If you listen to my song, I can't say that. I can't say that. If I said, I got a message nigga pardon me, I understand they bloodhounds, why the fuck they bark at me? Pertaining to the whole group, so I can't say that. He didn't come at me first, because I dropped that first, you know what I mean? But like, after I drop that shit, it's like, I'm, what was the question, so I was going, I was going to go on some And I was like, how was it, I mean, Benz, though y'all was cool, and now y'all on two different sides of the fence, and now y'all going at each other, so like, how was it for you? Like, damn, y'all y'all did start together, so how you feel going at them, know what I mean? Like I told you, the first time I had, we both had mixed emotions, because we friends, and nobody really, like that's my man for real, for real. Like as much as he don't want to admit it, and I don't want to, not, I ain't gonna say admit it. As much as he don't say it, and I don't say it as much. Like damn, that's my man, a hundred grand. Like that's my man for real. So certain shit I was saying probably was really hurting me. Certain shit he was saying, I know it's hurting me. Yeah, you know I mean, so it's like, cause being as though we from the same hood, a lot of shit niggas didn't even pick up on that I knew what he was talking about, cause he from the hood. Certain shit I probably was saying, a lot of niggas ain't pick up, cause I'm from the hood. I, I know him, he know me. You feel me? So it was like I knew it was mixed emotions in that. I, I, I know he sometimes he'd be like, damn, I'm going at my dog. Like, it's my dog. Cause if it was like that, a lot of niggas he went went battle with him wouldn't speak to no more. You know what I mean? Like he still hit me up, he still calling me though. He still a slide, still a slide on me. So it's like, that shit wasn't that bad. Like, but I know at that time we both had mixed emotions. Like, what? He said that about me? I'm gonna fucking kill him. I'm saying thing. He said that about me? I'm gonna fucking 
Bo's head off. We was on the same time, you know what I mean? So, like, we, it was mixed emotions with us probably more than anybody, anybody else. And still, I mean, still, because I knew he was gunning for me after I did what I did to him at that job. So, like, it was probably, and like I said, I grew up with them too. They from the hood. So, it was like mixed emotions. This nigga go out here, and he come down here, he think he's slaying us? Never. We ain't going for that. You know what I mean? So, that's how that shit was. Like, Right. So in the in the mix of that y'all going back and forth like cause everybody pretty much on y'all side was in it and everybody on they in they side pretty much was in it. But I mean speak on like how like because Philly rap beef, I mean, known to go go to the left, I mean speak about I mean some of the things that that y'all was feeling or how y'all how y'all was moving at the time, like damn, like we going at it with them, maybe we certainly so small we might bump into niggas. Like how what was y'all mentality at the time? Real shit. We bumped into certain niggas, but we was for Philly be so small, we was not bumping into a lot of them niggas. We bumped into blood hells a couple times and and shit, and shit got crazy, a damn it crazy. Uh it was at a graduation too. I mean, we bumped in the niggas caught niggas slipping and niggas was copping pleas. It was all types of shit. So it was like, we, 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 we knew we had to, now we had to move a little different because it ain't like Meek Mills probably was going to get out and really kill nobody. He Meek Mills. He the, he the, he the, he the, he the prize. Or oh, it ain't like you want to let AR really get out and kill a nigga for real, for real. If you got a hundred niggas around you that's willing to shoot because he, he the prize. It's like, I, I got these niggas ain't gonna let me. Sh these niggas ain't gonna let nobody. You know what I mean? Cause I'm the prize. You feel me? So niggas be protecting the prize. So it was dumb niggas more like it was the niggas like nah and, and niggas like that. Like no, I ain't trying. None of that. Ain't nobody getting close to eight. So it wasn't really so per se the rappers. You know what I mean? It, it, it was more like the niggas that was around us. Like if I see any of them niggas, I'm going at them. I'm, it's on. I'm not playing with none of them niggas. It was more sort of rappers. You feel me? Right. I mean the uh, the, the entourage and shit that you yeah, really right, had to right. worry about. You know what I mean? The rap, like, we we, we kind of like we all friends for real, for real. You know what I mean? It's just entertainment, like I said. You know what I mean? Weird. So. Um, far, far as like y'all, y'all, y'all went at it, and it was a classic. Know what I mean, like we was talking about, and then at some point, um, during the interview with Nah, he had mentioned that y'all ended up squashing it because Oskino had reached out to you, and then had reached out to Meek on their side. Y'all ended up two different squashes. All right, yeah, speak on that. Same way that Bob said they squashed it. I didn't even know Reed in the head was doing no three king shit. I did not know that shit. We all was fucked up about that shit. We thought the beef was still on. One day we in the Congress and Cosmic Cab. We had we got that new Three Kings record. It's Reed, Hattie, and Gil. We like, what the fuck? We calling everybody. Like, yo, what the fuck is going on? Like, how the fuck they just squashed the beef and didn't tell nobody? Like, you know what I mean? So that was the way that Hattie and Reed squashed their beef. Now, Oskino called me, called me in the next studio. He never told me Meek and I was coming. He never told me that I was coming. So we both, we both pull up at the same time. Meek and them hop out, we hop out. For the rip, Oskino, that's like Meek, big brother, that's like my big brother. He grabbed me and Meek, fuck the entourage. Like no, listen, this is y'all my y'all my little brothers. We're not doing this. You know what I mean? I I care about y'all more than all of these niggas. We gonna go in here, we gonna squash the shit, we gonna do a record together. Let it be better for marketing, it'll be better for this. And you know what I mean on the strength of Ostino being an OG, I you know mean, and me and me already, you know what I mean, being our right, like it was like that. All right, I shit, you know, that's what I should have rapped with. You know what I mean? So we went in there, we did a song together, me, Ustino, that nigga Lil, me, and it was Kaboom. Man, so tell people how how that that beef and battle impacted everybody involved as far as their career, their notoriety, they buzz, you know, because people was throwing a lot of them clips on YouTube, and people still talk about it to this day. So tell, tell how that situation kind of impacted everybody involved. Like. 
we be responsible for YouTube. I feel like we got YouTube popping. You know what I mean? Back in our era, like, that's all you was hearing about was that Philly shit. So everybody from all over the world was coming to see that Philly shit. You know what I mean? I don't fuck what it was. Like, everybody was coming to see that Philly shit. So we got the weed really, really popping. You feel me? Like, that's how that shit was. We got that shit rolling on the internet. So, that shit came easy to us, yo. That shit came easy to us, bro. That shit, that shit. That shit wasn't nothing, bro. Right. So speaking on that, talk about that um how some of the people, I mean, that that came up on that that ended up making good careers themselves, like rappers and stuff like that, that reached out to you and I mean acknowledged you like damn bro, I used to watch this shit on YouTube. Talk about how that feel, like people actually giving you props and paying homage and stuff like that. Um fifty court beans. Um Tony Rowan and uh, in the NBA, Styles P, Kiss, um, so many niggas, Murray Moon, um, Don Q. It's too many niggas, bro. Uh, my nigga Mims, this is why I'm hot. Me, I mean, it, it's, it, it, it's, 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 it's like a lot of niggas that really acknowledge me. Fred the guy, son. I can go on for days though, gunplay. You know what I mean? Like, when they seen me, it was like, I know you from YouTube, you feel me? I, I, I know you from, from whatever you be doing, your little videos and shit. So, like, a lot of niggas. It's, it's probably more than that, but like, too many niggas. I can go, Dion Williams, uh, 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 Wagner, he used to play for Cleveland when he seen me. I seen him in the club the other day. Like, just be a, a whole bunch of motherfuckers, mainly like celebrities. It'd be celebrity motherfuckers that you'll be fucked up about. Like, damn, why the fuck they know me? Or what the fuck did I do that was that crazy? You know what I mean? So, like, that should be a wonderful feeling, though, bro, because you know you're doing something. Cause these niggas that you looking up to, these niggas that you like, oh shit, like, I wanna be like them niggas. So, if you hear them niggas say your name, when you hear them niggas come up to you, it'll be like, damn, bro. I respect what you do, you got a shit. That shit is, this, this is a good feeling, bro. That shit is a real good feeling. Where? So since we did our last interview, you know what I mean, that was some months back. That was a couple months, you know what I mean, now probably like four, five, six months, something like that. Um, since then, you you really stepped it up on your work work ethic with the songs and all that. You ended up dropping a little banger that kind of made a little way for you, Money Mitch. You know what I mean, you got a lot of good feedback from that song. So tell people a little bit about, you know what I mean, how that came together and how, how the uh, feedback, feedback was on that. See, what, all right, I'm going to keep it real with you. This what happened with a lot of rappers from my era. When the internet trans transferred, when this shit stopped being vinyl and CDs and shit, they didn't know how to make that transition over to the internet world. The phones, the Instagrams, the, 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 the Spotify, the iTunes, they didn't know how to switch over to that shit. So that shit kind of left them behind, you know what I mean? They ain't know how to figure it out. So they was kind of stuck. Like, really kind of stuck, they ain't know what to do, bro. So that made it hard for niggas to try to switch over. So what I tell niggas is, look, you gotta tuck your pride, bro, and you gotta get what was going on. I'm not saying I'm going to dumb this shit down. I'm not saying I'm going to get in here and say, check that Laffy Taffy. No, I'm not going to do that. But everything is fast right now. Why do you think it's called Instagram? Instant mean fast, instant oatmeal, instant anything, it means fast. Everybody, don't nobody want to sit and think. So you got to give them what they want. You got to give them, you ain't got to be the, 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 the dumbest rapper, but you got to give them what they want. You got to give them them club bangers. That shit that they can dance to, that shit that they can feel to. So that's what I was looking for. I checked out a few niggas. I'm like, damn, I find, I find this one nigga, uh, Young OG JP. Like, damn, you got something wrong with yourself, you know what I mean? I hit him up, he come right down, he like, what you feeling? You playing 100 beats, we ain't feeling nothing on We get the one, one beat, he like, yo, we got some shit on this one. Go in there, come right up. 
Bitch, y'all feel like money, man. I'm like, oh shit, that's, that's that. That's it right there, like, you know what I mean? So I go in there, I lay the verses on that, y'all. I didn't even think it was going to be my single. 